What is true beauty? And how can we experience and express it? This is the life lesson we'll learn from the 12th star of Vedic astrology, Chitra, Sensual Brilliance. In this series, Life Lessons of the Vedic Nakshatra, we'll discover how life really works by exploring the 27 constellations through the mystical Sanskrit words of the Vedic Nakshatra Sutra. So we're going to continue with our series, Life Lessons from the Vedic Nakshatra. In this series, we're drawing all the wisdom from the Nakshatra Sutra, which is a part of the Taittiriya Brahmana, which is a very important part of the Vedas. I am translating and commenting on this particular section of Taittiriya Brahmana, the Nakshatra Sutra, and I'll be publishing it in about two weeks. What we do is each week we look at a sutra for one of the Nakshatras and we start by looking at the actual original Sanskrit. Indrasya Chitra Ritam Prastat Satyam Avastat Sensual brilliance needs honesty to create true beauty. Sensual brilliance needs honesty to create true beauty. Now let's have a look at this sutra word by word really quickly, just so that you understand the individual words involved here. The first word is Indra. This is the word that describes the god of the nakshatra. Every nakshatra has a god. People expect to hear the word Tvashta as the god of Chitra, because that's the god of Chitra, is Tvashta. So why does the sutra say Indra? Well, it's not that the Taittiriya Brahman is saying, hey, there's a new, we have a different idea about who's the god of Chitra Nakshatra is actually Indra. That's not what's going on. Because later on in the, in the Taittiriya Brahmana, the author clearly says Tvashta resides in Chitra. He says it twice, two or three times by name. Why then has the author not said Tvashta Chitra, but has said Indrasya Chitra? Why? The key to understanding why they use the word Indra is because Indra is not just a name for a person. Indra is just is a descriptive word. That means the best. Something that has, literally it means something that has the power, uh, that has the power and the capacity. Anybody can be called Indra. Anybody who's the best, powerful, who's a king can be called Indra. Many people in India have the name Rajendra, something Indra, any Indra. So it's not like Indra, anytime you hear the word Indra, it only means Indra, the rain god. So here the author is just calling Tvashta Indra. And there's an important relationship between Indra and Indriya, which is very important to understanding this nakshatra and this sutra. Indra means the power source, the powerful, and Indriya means the expression of power or the tool for expressing the power. The most common Sanskrit word for the senses, like your eyes and your ears and your nose, is Indriya, the way of expressing the power of the conscious being, the Indra. This is very important for understanding Chitra Nakshatra because it's very essentially acute Nakshatra. The, the senses are very keen and alert through this Nakshatra. So therefore, the author said Indrasya, Indrasya Chitra. And let's go on and check out the next word, Chitra, the name of the Nakshatra itself. Literally, the word means the layer maker, Chitra. The tra is the maker, and the chi is the thing that you've put together like a layer. So chitra means building, designing, making. And chitra has to do with also a brightness, uh, a clarity, a brilliance, a shine, an effulgence, and a lot of having things, having a lot of layers, making a lot of sparkles, different facets, different colors, being very variegated. So it says sensual brilliance, indrasya chitra, the brilliance of, within the senses, needs parastat ritam it needs honesty rita means honesty it means not so much honesty but it means something which is honest something which is true something which is genuine the sense perceptions need to be very genuine if you are going to create something beautiful so the need of the nakshatra or the parastat is ritam genuine perception, honest, accurate, sincere perception. 
And the aim of it, of Astat, is Satya. Satya means something which is true, which has Sat, something which has substance. So, and something which has substance and is true is very, very effective. So this word Satya indicates something which is effective, substantive, true, real, substantial. So sensual brilliance needs honesty to create true beauty. So to wrap it all into one little ball of meaning for you, Chitra, Nakshatra, is all about using sensual expertise to create beautiful, detailed, and fascinating things. Using clear and accurate perception to make those creations truly substantial, valid, and effective. Now let me read you a bit from, from my commentary on the sutra about how the nakshatra functions and malfunctions. When chitra functions well, we perceive clearly. So if chitra is functioning well, it indicates very clear perception, very honest perception, very sincere, genuine perception, accurate perception, and thus express honest, sincere, and useful creations. We're seeing things clearly and honestly and accurately and genuinely, so our expressions reflect that perception. And so we express and create honest, genuine, sincere things. That's what chitra does when it functions well. When chitra malfunctions, it indicates a lack of ability to have ritta in your indriya, a lack of ability to have genuine perception, clear, accurate, sincere perception. So it will be like bent perceptions, distorted perceptions, perceptions which are bent around your own desires. So it's a malfunctioning chitra is like a inability to see clearly. And then the, the things that we project and create in our life are also going to be disingenuine, right? They're only going to have the outer appearance of the thing that we're actually trying to achieve. Now let's look at the life lesson that this Nakshatra Sutra on Chitra teaches us. It teaches us a very important lesson. This Sutra teaches us a very important lesson about sensual beauty in Rasa Chitra. Sensual beauty, it's not trying to make a big statement about some abstract beauty. It's talking about actual, real, perceivable beauty. In Drasya, the sensual beauty. The lesson that it makes is actually very simple. The lesson is this. Sensual beauty which has honesty, truth, and realness, ritam, is a very good thing, satyam. So the sensual beauty that's genuine and is honest and true, ritta, will be satya, a very good thing that's very, very pleasing and is a very good thing. But sensual beauty without honesty is a negative thing that will not endure and not really be effective in generating happiness. So if we go back to the original question that we opened the video with, what is true beauty? And how can we experience and express it? Well, true beauty is honest beauty, right? How do we experience and express it through honest perception of things? Now let's turn back to the word indrasya to really figure out what this honesty thing is. So indra, is the soul, the consciousness, the powerhouse of, of energy, and the senses or the body is indriya, the expression of the soul. So when the soul, indra, expresses itself through the senses, indriya, that's when you can generate true beauty. What is true beauty? It's a real expression of your inner self. That's what true beauty is. When the indra comes out through its indriya, when the being inside makes an expression of what it is. That's beautiful. Beauty. How you express true beauty is by showing your true self openly and honestly. And frankly, folks, how do you even know what to express? You don't even know who you really are. So this perception thing has to go two ways. It's not just the consciousness expressing itself out, but it's also the senses looking in towards the consciousness. So when the senses, everybody's senses are trying to perceive something, interesting, some salty thing, some sweet thing, some red thing, some roundish thing, some square thing. Everybody's trying to experience something that strikes their fancy. But what's the real thing that's going to make the senses happy? To experience consciousness, the source of all these objects, the indra behind all the indriya. So if the senses try to turn inward and perceive the soul, if they try to experience ritta, 
the true genuine substance of thing and the satya. Then they get a breathtaking experience of sincere truth. So it's this two-way street. How do you how do you express true beauty? Well, you have to know what true beauty is. How do you know what true beauty is? You have to experience it. How do you experience it? Look in. Don't think about who I am in terms of what my mind feels like, what my body looks like. Think about who I am in, in terms of this divine being. Figure out your divinity. You're an eternal conscious entity, unlimited. Observe that. Try to observe that. Then try to express it. This is the whole secret of Chitra Nakshatra and how it makes things beautiful. And this is true beauty for you to experience and be. So thank you so much for sticking through the whole video. And we do one of these every week. So next week, same time, we'll be doing the next video on the series. And also on Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, I do a live session on random different topics. So you're welcome to join that. Subscribe if you want to get the notifications. Subscribe to the channel. Get whatever you have to do. Click a bell. I don't know. So thank you so much. See you next week. Don't miss the life lessons from the other 26 star clusters of Vedic Astrology. Subscribe to my channel now. And keep your ears up for announcements about the release of this book and the next online classes about it. Thanks.